We teach people LabVIEW. One of the biggest things people want to be able to do is control their instruments with LabVIEW. Let's learn how. First off, which instruments are we talking about? Maybe a standalone DMM, perhaps a pump, a mixer, a lock and amplifier, maybe a robotic arm, essentially anything that can be connected to a computer through some sort of standard interface can be controlled with LabVIEW. Next, we should know that there are many layers of communication that go from LabVIEW to an instrument. Let's look. At the bottom, we have the instrument with which we're communicating. This communicates through our operating system, Windows, to an interface driver. This interface driver is specific to the interface. So we would have a separate driver for serial, for 488.2 or GPIB, or Bluetooth, whatever. On top of that, we have NIVISA, which is one unifying or umbrella driver that can communicate with a variety of instruments with a common interface. On top of that, we see instrument drivers. These drivers are specific to an instrument, say an Agilent 34401 DMM or a Tektronix 7000 series oscilloscope. On top of these driver layers, we have the applications which interface with them, namely LabVIEW and MAX, or the Measurement and Automation Explorer. You can see that LabVIEW can typically interface with our instrument through any of these three methods, instrument driver, NIVISA, and the interface driver. An instrument driver is a set of VIs already made in LabVIEW that communicates with a particular instrument model. So let's say I have a Tektronix AFG3252 signal generator connected through GPIB sitting here on my desktop. And I want to know if there's already an instrument driver available so that I don't need to program low-level commands either through VISA or the interface driver. If I had this instrument driver already correctly installed, I'd go into LabVIEW and be able to see it in my instrument I.O. instrument drivers palette. Here I see all of the instrument drivers I already have. So if I don't see it here, I'll go to Help, Find Instrument Drivers, and this launches the Instrument Driver Finder. It's first looking for my login information. It found me and addresses me by name. I'm gratified. It's just using my NI.com profile. If you don't have an NI.com profile, it's free. Just go to National Instruments website and sign up so they can send you marketing material. First, I'll click on Manufacturer, browse through them until I find Tektronix, and then in the Additional Keywords field, I'll type in the model number AFG3252. Search, and there it is, the Tektronix AFG3000 series instrument driver. I'll look over here and see that my model, the AFG3252, is indeed supported through GPIB. What a relief. So let's install it. I click Install. LabVIEW thinks about it for a second, notifies me of success. I'll start using it. Go back to my instrument driver finder. I see that I can explore the instrument driver a little further and look at examples here. For now, I'll just close it, go back to my instrument driver palette, and I find indeed the Tektronix AFG 3000 series. Tack that down, bring it up here, and now I'm going to be able to program my instrument. That was easy. The next time around, we're going to take a closer look at the instrument driver and how to program an instrument with it, and we'll also look at how to install an instrument driver that isn't found on NI.com or through the Instrument Driver Finder. Until then, please anxiously refresh our VI High blog at blog.sixclear.com.